I may try to slow you down on those last four measures when we get to the double forte, <coughs> because it's so critical that it times right with the end of the film. So just watch me there. Same thing again? <laughs> Steve, you on? Thank you. Here we go. Good to see you, mate. Good to see you, right? How are you? Yeah, yeah. Good. Good to see you. This is going to be bonkers, Dario. <laughs> I haven't looked at it. No, don't worry. Uh, I don't need you to have looked at it. Just, we have a lot to get through. That's all I know. Everybody call this meeting to order. Does everyone know who everybody is? Probably not. Um, our two composers for the day. Mr. Fox, Jack, to introduce yourself. Yeah, we've we've met. I know all these lot, and we've met, and I know you. Thank God. <laughs> so uh, I think I'm ready. We were approached by the BFI to see if we could do uh, uh, music for this amazing creative archive before it was finished. And so I picked five composers who like tonal music, theater music, folk music, traditional music, and um, ethnic music and put together enough sounds to sort of keep the mix really healthy and vibrant. Great, so don't be afraid to kind of really play out. Like, never feel like you're kind of the one in the background, like you're all kind of there, so... But it's more like a band. It's more like a band. Yeah, let's do like a band. Yeah. Let's do a band. I advocated for a, a healthy group of, of guys, our sort of, um, our sort of most dazzling multi-instrumentalists. Because we're the club, uh, we put bands together, and we put bands, bespoke bands, and they are literally juggling instruments and putting down small things and picking up enormous things, and it's, it's unbelievable what they do. Mostly, audiences would find it quite hard to watch mute picture. You certainly couldn't imagine dubbing the words to these short sections of film. So in a way, to breathe life back into them, even if it's not the, quite the same original life as they would have had, is a valuable thing because it enables us to see how people a hundred years ago or so, how they approached Shakespeare, which is absolutely fascinating. I wrote to the five composers and I said something very minimal. I wanted to be as, as concise and as non-intrusive about what they would write as possible. And I did at some point say it would be nice if you told a story through your music much in the way that you tell stories at the Globe. He basically encouraged us to attack the project with a sort of broadly renaissance brushstroke, if you like, because there may be a sort of expectation around the sound that five globe regular composers might produce. There wasn't any detailed discussion ab about um, making an approach which gels, but obviously the um, requirements of an ensemble of the same six musicians impose a stamp on it, and you've got the same six players. Um, and I gave myself some constraints. I said, right, they can only play one instrument each, apart from two musicians who are allowed to play two. And that's just one of those things where you, sometimes if there's no fences to the field, you can wander off and you lose track of where you're going. <laughs> So there's a real variety of approach, and that 
in the beginning is a little jarring because you're changing channels from one creative mind to the next. But what the band has done in assimilating those styles into one through line is amazing and makes the composers seem much more alike as the process has gone on. I fairly randomly chose this lovely section at the start of the film which was broadly entitled Artifice and some of it uh, described early films attempts to experiment with illusion I suppose so how to make Puck fly from Midsummer Night's Dream. I did a rather sweet theme for Titania and, and Puck together because of the this sort of innocence that's just kind of radiating off those actors in that time. There's something about the images which is beautifully naive actually. It's meant in the best way it, because because it was an early experiment with, with, with cinema and putting Shakespeare on film, you can almost see a glint in their eye. They look just delighted to be doing it. And also they're not sort of saddled with all our overrated postmodern irony, you know. We must make the fairies really dark. It's nice to actually match it and honour it and observe what's taking place and be and try to play the sweetness and the innocence. My score's split very definitely into two. So the first half is derived from period instrumentation, period melodies, and is much more traditional. The second half is more modern, more dramatic, uh, more expressive. My decisions were mainly driven by the emotional feel of any given clip. I might have a very light-hearted clip next to, say, um, Twelfth Night, next to something like Merchant of Venice, or Othello, which is much darker. It was finding a transition between those two things and, and managing to get the light and the dark. That's why I think I chose why I chose to, to have much lighter period style music next to the more dramatic, more modern sounding music. The odd thing in a way is that you have to decide whether you're going to try and be the words themselves. But in a way, it's not even worth beginning because the words have such a strong identity and such a strong music of their own, you can't equal that with music, it's such a different medium. So in a way you just do something of the tone and colour of the scene. If you look at um, Shylock in The Merchant of Venice, you'd have to say that compared with how we might approach that interpretation, that character now, it's very caricatured. It looks as though he's got a false nose. I wanted to do something which was really felt, so it starts with a descending violin phrase, and it might be to do with Shylock's huge disappointment in humanity or in the society he was in, that um, somebody of a different race originally would be treated in such a different way. We're watching that piece of film now, in 2016, and we're creating the music in 2016. We're not creating Elizabethan music, we're not creating early 20th century music, we're doing something for us to watch these incredible pieces of film right now. These characters are actually so embedded in my psyche and I'm sure the, the psyche of many, many, many people across around the world that actually just having these silent performances to music really just draws on the emotional context of the scene, which is such an interesting thing to do and something I never would have thought of before. But it's very interesting how recognisable these characters are and how 
important they are in, in our cultural heritage and in, and in our understanding of storytelling and all of these things.